Okay, this is gonna be, uh, hey, key. Hello, and uh, welcome to Modern Faith, and what, oh, whoa, whoa, we need intro. It starts out, well, symptoms usually, <laughs> Kitty cat. <Okay. laughs> no, it says someone else. Oh, is it someone else? Yeah. Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Today we were excited to be doing our first interview, and you may notice I'm actually sitting on top of Quinn here, and it's because we are in a confined, confined space, but we're doing our first interview. Today we have with us uh, Jolene Kanopic and her father Larry, and be speaking to him today on Modern Faith Unlimited. And hello and welcome to Modern Faith Unlimited. I'm William Henley. And I would be William Quinn. William, how are you doing today? It's been a rough day, but I, this I is... See. We got our first guest today. <laughs> we do first have our first guest. guest, and I need to apologize to him because we are now three hours into something that was supposed to start three hours ago. Hey, Editor Will here. I wish I could say that the three-hour delay is an exaggeration, but it's not. It, to be able to meet our guest needs, we had to meet at a different site than where we normally film. And this involved moving all of our equipment, and it took considerably longer to set up than we had considered. So uh, Jolene here has SMA, and if you could uh, explain a bit about what SMA is, the different stages and stuff like that. SMA is uh, uh, spinal muscular atrophy. It's a neuromuscular disease. It can affect walking, um, sitting, breathing, or even swallowing. The uh, spinal muscular atrophy has four types. As each type goes on, um, well, it goes from the most severe to less severe. Uh, type one is the most severe, and uh, you, you usually only live till you're about two years old. Mm -hmm. And um, you can't even keep your head up, and you um, you need assistance breathing. Yeah, I have type two uh, spinal muscular atrophy. It usually starts in uh, when you're a toddler, um, like you're born. And you seem normal up until like you start walking. Although I think some toddlers can't even walk um, at type two. Um, but I went from walking to crawling at around 18 months and then the disease just progressed from there. My muscles started getting weaker and weaker. And um, it was a blood test at age two and I was diagnosed with uh, the SMA type two. Yeah, three and four are less severe. Um, type three, it comes on like between the ages of two and 17, it can um, start in and then it progresses from there. And then type four is, it starts in as an adult and then it progresses. So knowing your diagnosis, uh, how did you feel? Uh, did they give you some sort of life expectancy? Are there any ways that you could maybe combat that? Maybe like as far as like your lifestyle, what you eat, or is there, is there any type of exercise you could do at all? I grew up doing physical therapy, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really help too much with a disease like this because mm -hmm. either way, I mean, it might help a little bit, but either way, you still atrophy as you get older, you mm -hmm. get weaker. Yeah. So um, it might have helped a little bit, but not much. There is a special diet that some people with SMA can go on, but it's really beneficial more toward like earlier in life, like as a toddler or child. Um, and we didn't know about that at the time, um, but it's called an amino acid diet. Mm. Um, I don't know too much about it because I didn't hear about it until I was an adult, so. Obviously there's some things you probably have some difficulties with. Uh, mm -hmm. You wanna, I, I guess some things that maybe we may not even think about that uh, you wanna discuss. Yeah, well, for one thing, um, it was easier to feed myself when I was little, but I noticed it takes a lot more effort for me now to feed myself, even though I can. Um, there's times where I get so weak during eating that I have to let my dad finish uh, feeding me. Um, and then there's some other personal um, issues that keep me from being out, um, out of our home for long periods of time uh, sometimes. Um, 
I mean, like I'm able to write and mm -hmm. use a computer mm -hmm. and um, I use an iPhone. Um, I can't pick up the phone. Like if I want to talk on the phone, I have to use speakerphone. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I have a little bit of use and strength in my right arm and hand, but not a lot. And my left arm, it's like almost dead. I mean, I can move it just very little bit. Mm -hmm. I can swing it a little bit and even grip things with my left hand, but it's not very useful. Larry, uh, if we could ask a bit about your life uh, before Jolene was born, about how you grew up, your spiritual life and uh, stuff like that. Yes, uh, I was grown up. I grew up a uh, very happy fa uh, family um, and uh, raised in the Catholic Church. Uh, did everything pretty much that uh, my friends were doing, going to games and playing outside. I loved the, the game of baseball, played with my friends in the neighborhood. And this was up in Illinois. And so uh, as I got older, I uh, joined the service. I was in the Navy and praise the Lord, when I joined the Navy at 21, that was also the the age where I, I received Christ. I received him on December 5th, 1982. I went in the service in 1982. And so I uh, got invited to church. Uh, they had vans that were running along uh, the piers every Sunday and Wednesday. And I, I got involved in the Baptist church. Uh, I thought it was so cool that uh, these are people that wanted to know about me when I walked in and they showed a lot of love. I thought it was great and very unusual that people bring their Bible to church. And so uh, I love the music. I love the atmosphere. I guess, yeah, I could say that I felt the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And from there, I, I would, uh, even on board the ship, go to chapel. Mm -hmm. And uh, people, while they were playing cards on board the ship, they noticed that I would have my suit on and my Bible, like, where are you going? And and I, I would tell them, and they thought it was cool. I wasn't ridiculed for it. When uh, Jolene was born, how was life before the diagnosis and then after her diagnosis? I was always uh, happy after the service. Um, I, I did a little bit of dating. I had a desire to get married, mm -hmm. and I, I finally uh, met... Um, her mom, Jolene's mom, and we got married, um, and I got involved in a ministry, Christian Blind Missions, uh, inspecting eyeglasses that were donated. Um, I was the project coordinator, and I, I loved doing that. I estimated at the time I was doing it, which was, I was actually doing the ministry in the, the basement of a optical center up in Burlington, uh, Wisconsin, that I, I inspected about half a million glasses and we would just send them overseas because a lot of people need glasses overseas and it was a, a worthwhile uh, ministry for a good cause. Mm -hmm. um, and so then at that time, I just started dating Jolene's mom. Uh, we went to church. Um, I uh, left the, the Baptist church. I was more interested, uh, curious about the spiritual gifts and so forth. And don't don't get me wrong. I love the Baptist Church. I love the people. And uh, we both grew up Baptist. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so I have a lot of respect for them. And so I, I started learning about uh, the gifts of the Spirit, and I loved the music. It was uh, it was just it was so pretty. I made a lot of great friends. Everything was go it was just going great, um, and then eventually, yeah, I did uh, get married. It was a wonderful wedding. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried for five years to no avail as far as children because we um, both wanted children, especially me. I wanted a daughter. That was one of the things when I joined the service. I thought to myself, I, I was only twenty one. I thought I always wanted to have a daughter, and so um, for about five years of trying, her mom got pregnant and. Um, lo and behold, it was a girl. I prayed every day. Uh, I want to say I prayed every day for a girl, and, and it happened. And she was perfect. She was beautiful. I couldn't believe she was mine. And then came uh, where I noticed that when, she, um, you know, we don't really have any video, but we have pictures, one or two pictures of uh, I took when she was standing. Uh -huh. And 
this was around 15 months or so, and then afterwards, uh, I noticed she reverted back to crawling, and people were telling me that, well, maybe that's because she took a bad fall and she's afraid to get back up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but she just continued to crawl and go slower and slower, and her uh, pediatrician was very uh, concerned about that. He recommended that we take her to a specialist, and with just one blood test, um, I found out her, her um, condition, which was spinal muscular atrophy uh, type 2, and um, it was something that um, her mom and I had to deal with. And mm -hmm. but um, you know, it it just felt uh, it felt disheartening. And every parent wants a healthy child, mm -hmm. and yet it was something that I, you know, I don't know what it was. Just something inside me. I thought, you know, I can, I, I know I can deal with this, even if it's for a, a lifelong time because I love Jolene mm -hmm. and you know, years and years wanting a daughter, I didn't, you know, it was unconditional love. Right. Yeah. I felt, so that's good to look at good way to look at it. How you got out of the service? What were you doing um, as far as work and stuff like that? So there was like not much work. It, believe it or not, this was, uh, I got out of, out of uh, active duty in 1995, even though I was still, excuse me, 1985, even though I was still, um, in the reserves, but um, I worked for three and a half years um, at Burger King. I was a crew trainer, and um, that was something that I enjoyed doing. Um, and you may be the only person who's worked at Burger yeah. King who enjoyed it. I hated it. Mm -hmm. well, worked there for a year. <laughs> well, I think it was the Lord. You know, the Lord always um, helped me along, and I, I got to listen to. They would put me on a third shift where I was there all alone and I would key the mic in and put uh, a boom box there and, and play the WMBI uh, radio. And while I mopped floors and cleaned the grills, uh, cleaned the broilers and so forth. That's what I did. <laughs> the overnight shift. Mm. Yeah. I, I didn't like it though. I mean, I, I, I didn't like it as far as the hours, but I liked the work. Yeah. And the peacefulness of it also. Right. That, exactly. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have that someone, uh, breathing over your back, telling you uh, yeah. you need to do this, you need to do that. Jolene, uh, let's talk about uh, I guess uh, school for you, and um, especially the early years. And um, uh, you were in public school, and if you could tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I was able to attend public school full time up until eighth grade, and um, during that time, I had an aide with me that assisted me with whatever I needed. Um, even with something as simple as opening up a marker for me because I was too weak to do that. Mm -hmm. And I loved school. I made friends. I was like all the other kids. Um, I really enjoyed school. Um, and it was a little bit heartbreaking for me, like in eighth grade when I was about to enter eighth grade and I started experiencing muscle weakness that, um, that kept me from attending public school full time. Um, so I just went, um, to, uh, they had me do, um, they had me tutored at home, uh, mm. like two or three tutors from the public school it came out, uh, for five days a week. It was like between one and two hours each day. And they would, um, do like a few classes with me. Each day was like a, um, a different subject, um, one subject per day. So I was faced with, um, doing school years past my um, expected graduation day. Like all my other friends were graduating and I was still supposed to be doing school years past them mm -hmm. um, because I was only doing so much each day at home. So I just decided not to go through with the years of schooling. So I received a certificate of completion, okay. which okay. is uh, lower than a GED. It doesn't qualify you that for that many jobs. Uh -huh. But I just, I wasn't really motivated to stay in school. And at the time, <clears throat> I wasn't even sure if I could get a job at the time because mm -hmm. I had to lay down so often during the day. That time when you had, when you, you, had, you were discouraged with school and everything, mm -hmm. uh, you still had a good core group of friends that were at school still and your social life was still okay, I would think, correct? Well, I had, um, I had a best friend. Um, we were really close, um, up until maybe high school, 
like when I was about to enter high school because, um, well, we just had some personal issues that mm-hmm. kind of um, ended our friendship. But it was kind of hard after that because um, she was the only real friend that I had at the time. And so after that, I just felt myself being more isolated. I stayed home more and I wasn't really surrounded by a lot of people. And um, so it was it was difficult. And that was one of the reasons why I uh, eventually wanted to move out of Illinois to Texas. Gotcha. Uh-huh. Losing your friend at that time, mm-hmm. um, I assume your spirituality and your, your walk with God played a heavy role in your uh, being at that time. You're close with God at that time. Yeah. Um, I believe that was at a time where I was, uh, especially after um, we parted ways. Um, I think it was at that time that I really had to um, search for God with my whole heart because it was the starting point of a little bit of a dark season because nothing in my life seemed like it was going right. Um just with the atrophy kicking in and staying home more and not being surrounded by my friends. Um, at the time, it seemed like my life wasn't going anywhere. And um, But I, I did try to, um, as best I could, to um, have a positive attitude regardless, even though I, I went through some tough periods. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that's when I, uh, I brought up to my dad about possibly moving out of state. Um, for a fresh start and also for a warmer climate. We're going to need to uh, wrap up uh, this episode, but we're going to have uh, Jolene and our father here on the, the next episode, and we're going to uh, finish up this interview. Um, they were featured in our, our uh, Reach at Church magazine. The article is online, so I will link to it in the description. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Bye for now. Take care. Bye-bye.